we've been learning about this determinant. The determinant is a function, right? It's a function that takes an n by n matrix and returns a scalar, a scalar being a number, right? So it takes an n by n matrix with real um, elements in the matrix and returns a real number. Um, we can, uh, we've talked about defining this determinant for the general n by n matrix using uh, formulas such as the Laplace expansion or the Leibniz formula. Um, you can actually define the determinant through three relatively simple properties and uh, prove everything else about the determinant using those three properties. So I want to kind of sketch to you in the video today how you can do that. I won't go through all of these proofs because it would take too much time to do that and you would forget the proofs anyway. So mainly I would just want to step you through what are the properties of the, of the determinant function. So let's start with the three uh, defining properties. So property one, is a uh, normalization property. It's that the determinant of the identity matrix equals one, okay? Remember that we introduced the determinant as, as, the, as the number from a matrix which tells us whether the matrix is invertible or not. If the determinant was uh, zero, the matrix did not have an inverse. But you can always, of course, multiply that uh, definition by a constant. So this sets the scale. So the determinant of i equals 1. And if I uh, show you the meaning in terms of 2 by 2 matrices, this one is very easy. So the determinant of the 2 by 2 identity matrix, we know it's 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0. So that will be 1, right? That's the first property. The second property, property 2, is that the determinant will change sign. Determinant changes sign uh, under row interchange, okay? So if you switch two rows in a matrix, the determinant will change sign. Here we can see if we take um, A, B, C, D, and then we switch the rows, so we have uh, C, D, A, B. This is A, D minus B, C. This is B, C minus A, D, so this has a minus sign. Okay, so the determinant changes sign when you switch two rows. That's a defining property, okay? Finally, the third defining property, property three, is that the determinant is a linear function of the first row, okay? That's a more abstract property that you might not know what I mean by saying the determinant is a linear function of the first row, but I can show you uh, the example with the two by two matrix. So if you look at linear function actually has two properties. If we look at the first row and we multiply it by a constant, so k times a, k times b, c, d, and we ask what is the determinant of that, we get kad minus kbc. Both terms have a k in it, so you can factor out the um, k. And then we have uh, A, B, C, D, okay? So saying that the uh, determinant is a linear function of the first row in this instance means that if you multiply the first row only by a constant, keeping the second row unchanged, then you can uh, factor out the constant, okay? That's different than matrix multiplication, right? Matrix multiplication is if you ma multiply a matrix by a scalar, every element in the matrix gets multiplied by the scalar. Here we're restricting it just to one row, keeping all the other rows fixed. 
Okay, the second property of a linear function, so these are both property three, is that if we have this matrix A plus A prime, B plus B prime, C, D, then the fact that this is a linear function means we can split this into two determinants, A, B, C, D, plus a prime, B prime, C, D. So that's the second uh, linear function property. Um, it's a little bit, uh, you can do the algebra to show this, right? This is A plus A prime times D minus B plus B prime times C. And then you use the distribu distributive law. And then you'll show that you can write that as the sum of two determinants here. Okay, so fine for a two-by-two two matrix. Um, the beauty here, from a mathematical point of view, is that this is all you need to define the determinant function, the function that maps an n-by-n n matrix to a scalar, to a number. With these uh, definitions, you can prove the uh, Laplace expansion. You can prove the Leibniz formula for n by n matrices, okay? We won't do that here, but I want to show you that what are the other properties that these three properties um, can um, lead to, that you can use these original three properties to prove all of these other properties. Uh, let's write down some of these properties. Um, Property three says the determinant is a linear function of the first row, but property two says you can interchange rows and change the sign. So if you interchange rows, so let's say you make the second row the first row, and then you use that the first row is linear function, and then you change the rows back again, then you can show that the determinant is a linear function of all rows, right? Not just the first row. The first, there's nothing special about the first row. Uh, you can prove that the determinant equals zero if you have uh, two rows that are equal, if you have equal rows. So if two rows are identical, you can s switch them. You change the sign of the determinant, but the determinant is the same. So then the determinant has to be zero, right? If, if x is equal to minus x, then x has to be zero. So that's how you prove from these properties. So let me uh, just continue by writing down the properties. Uh, the determinant equals zero if, um, if you have a row of zeros. Okay, so if one of the rows of the matrix is all zeros, then the determinant is zero. Uh, determinant equals zero implies uh, not invertible. Okay, so that's a very key result. That with these three properties, you can prove that if the determinant of an n by n matrix is zero, then that matrix does not have an inverse, right? Ax equals b uh, does not have a unique solution. Um, the determinant of a diagonal matrix, the determinant of a lower triangular matrix, the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is just the product of the diagonal elements. Okay? So that's, uh, from a practical point of view, that's very useful if you can do some operations on a matrix to convert it to an upper triangular matrix, like Gaussian elimination, say, then uh, you can just find the determinant from taking the product of the diagonal elements. Um, the determinant of the product of two n by n matrices, A times B, is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. So the determinant of the product separates into the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Of course, A and B are n by n matrices. This is a, actually a somewhat tricky 
uh, theorem to prove, but one can uh, prove this based on properties 1, 2, and 3, and subsequent properties that one derives from 1, 2, and 3. Um, very useful. This is actually a very useful result. And do not be confused. Determinant of A plus B is not equal to the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. It only works for multiplication. Um, the determinant of an inverse matrix, if A is invertible, is equal to 1 over the determinant of A. Um, that's a nice result. And uh, the last result is the determ that I want to tell you is that the determinant of the transpose matrix is equal to the determinant of A. Okay? Um, so using all of these uh, results that we have here and uh, properties 1, 2, and 3, there's um, a very nice and practical uh, result, which is that the determinant doesn't change, right? The determinant doesn't change. Determinant of a matrix doesn't change. When you multiply a row by a constant, when you multiply a row by a number, a constant, a number, say, and add it to another row, OK? That's a very important uh, property. So this is Gaussian elimination, right? You, uh, you try to zero below the pivot by multiplying the pivot row by a number and then uh, adding it to the row below the pivot in order to get zeros under the pivot. So that process of Gaussian elimination doesn't change the determinant of the matrix. So it gives you a method of computation where you can uh, work on a matrix, reduce it to upper triangular form using this Gaussian elimination, and then you, the determinant is just the product of the diagonal elements. So computationally, this is a very important result. The difference with Gaussian elimination is that if you multiply a row by a number and replace that row, you have to take into account this property 3. So that means that you cannot multiply a row by a number. The, 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 the determinant then will also be multiplied by the same number. So you have to be careful when you do that operation. And also, when you do Gaussian elimination, sometimes you switch rows. Here you can also switch rows, but then the sign of the determinant changes. So that's another operation you have to be careful. But the standard workhorse of Gaussian elimination, where you multiply a row by a number and add it to another row, that doesn't change the sign of the determinant. OK. So let me uh, briefly summarize. Uh, the determinant is a function that acts, that takes an n by n matrix as an argument and then returns a number. Um, the, you can define that function simply by stating three properties that function has to satisfy. The determinant of the identity, n by n identity matrix has to be one. The determinant changes sign when you switch rows of the matrix. And the determinant is a linear function of the first row. When you do that, you have all of these properties. Okay? And in addition to these properties, you have the fact that you can do Gaussian elimination on the matrix to simplify the matrix and to simplify the computation of the determinant. Okay, one more point okay, that's also important. We have this determinant of A transpose equals determinant of A. What that means is that whatever you do with, on the rows of a matrix also applies to the columns of a matrix. Okay? So if you have a column of all zeros, that means the determinant is zero. Or you can do Gaussian elimination across columns rather than just across rows. 
So that's another useful computational property. Okay, I'm Jeff Chasnoff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.